Remember also thy Creator in the days of thy youth, before the evil days come, and the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. 2. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened, and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow down, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those who look out of the windows shall be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the street when the sound of the grinding is low, and one shall rise to the song of a bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Yea, they shall be afraid of that which is high, and terror shall be in the way. And the almond tree shall blossom, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his everlasting home, and the mourners go about the streets. The silver cord is loosed, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returneth to the earth as it was, and the spirit returneth unto God who gave it. Forget about me? Oh, don't leave me! Don't leave! Oh. And the forest went on singing its mournful song, and the thunder crashed, and the rain poured down. What else can I do to save these people? cried out Danko above the thunder. And suddenly he ripped open his breast and tore out his heart and held it high above his head. It shone like the sun, even brighter than the sun, and the raging forest was subdued and lighted up by this torch, the torch of a great love for the people. And the darkness retreated before it and plunged, quivering, into a yawning bog in the depths of the forest. And in their astonishment, the people were as if turned to stone. The brave Danko cast his eye over the endless steppe, cast a joyful eye over this land of freedom, and gave a proud laugh. And then he fell down and died. And his followers were so full of joy and hope that they did not notice he had died, and that his brave heart was still flaming beside his dead body. But one timid creature noticed it, and fearing he knew not what, stamped on the flaming heart, and it sent up a shower of sparks and went out.
you shall control them, deceive them, and you shall gain much, otherwise they will devour you. Sir, I'm preparing a detailed report on the repairs. Would you say a week to get it all done? Go to the lower decks and you can see for yourself. They will explain to you that the repair time depends very much on the abilities of our crew members. As well as the abilities of the captain to perform his duties. Like getting the ship to its destination while keeping the cargo and crew safe. So, why don't you get to it, sir? Because the recent chain of events, how do I say it, cast a shadow over your competence. Now listen here. Let me explain something to you. I am in command of this vessel until either I or my ship ceases to exist. This is not your ship, sir. You are a member of its large crew tasked with a certain role, and in regards to its future, that might be decided sooner than you think. Are you threatening me? Here's a message from HQ for a start. Who's finally decided to grace our presence? What an honor! Would you be so kind as to help us? We're unworthy, of course, but we're so lonely. There, take the thing. It's not scientific, you know. But at least it works. against you. Protect yourself, or they will eat you. Yes, in, sir! Open the door! What's wrong with you? Ahead, flank! Where's the radio message? Did you give that message to him?
What's the matter? Isn't this what you wanted? Grab the wheel! The ship is... It's not turning! The control lever is stuck! I can't move it! Help! For if one falls, another will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, and hath not another to lift him up. Hold on, Captain. I will beg HQ on my knees for the ship. Just you hang. We are getting out. Out! Open water! We've made it! We're underway! They'll get you sooner or later. Read this. I'm very glad. No, really. What did you expect? You had a pain in the neck. Both of you, yes, you and your sorry excuse for a ship. I'm so tired. Look, you're a big boy now. You can't play around forever. And I can't help you this time. Now go, please, go. Quit trying. Everyone has had it with you. No one wants you here. So there. He's been asking for it anyway. Read this. You know, I'm very glad. No, really. What did you expect? I was making it in my spare time, as if I felt something. Now it came in handy. Take it. We'll send it to HQ. Let them disassemble it.
Grab my hand! Come on! Come on, grab! No! Come on! Uh, 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 uh. I'm the captain of the North Wind Nuclear Icebreaker. Welcome. You are lucky. The ice is rather thin here. You could have easily gone under. Well, now, no time to lose. Let's head for the ship. We have some rough times ahead. And let us send your wonderful dogs back. Unlike us, they always find their way home. Follow me, cried Danko, and he rushed forward, holding his flaming heart high above his head to light the way. And the people followed him, as if under a spell. And once more the forest began to murmur and wave its treetops in wonder. But its murmur was drowned out by the sound of running feet. The people were running ahead boldly and swiftly, lured on by the wonderful vision of the flaming heart. And even now there were those who perished, but they perished without tears and complaints. And Danko went on ahead of them, his heart flaming brighter and brighter.